Hello, Bushy Bizalex here, back with something, <clears throat> back with something DIY related again. And I need to really try and stick that intro, because I'm not that good at that. <laughs> anyway, yes, um, I'm going to make this quick, because it is a very simple thing that I've done. And yes, you're looking at one of these ubiquitous electric bug sapper things, annihilators, cookers, frying pans, <laughs> whatever name you want to call these things. Yes, I have one of these, and technically I had two of these, although I've actually robbed parts of another one to make this one better. Now, this one is actually something you can get right now off Amazon. It's, it happens to be the one by, uh, well, by the company Zap It, it looks like. That's at least what they call themselves and this product. Now, they claim to, to this thing that they say that this is a, what, 4 kilovolt um, unit? Uh, firstly, bullshit. I'll get back to that in a second. It does not matter though. This thing it seems to have a few features that most seem, seem, seem to not. Not only is this thing well constructed, like this thing actually does feel like it would last some time. It has a few things that I find very interesting, and to be fair, the old zapper that I had, I was trying to modify in a few ways, as to not only give it some more power, but perhaps some just useful features. The first thing I did, and this is a common thing that people do, right, when with their zappers they are usually, what, double A's powered, like two double A's is the power source of these devices. Now, people have uh, tried, and it technically does work, but I'll get to it in a second, uh, that increasing the input power, because essentially the, the circuitry inside is just, um, com well, one way or another, it steps up the voltage a lot, and then a few um, voltage multiplier circuits and whatnot, and then a giant capacitor, and then he goes to the electrodes. It's quite self-explanatory. Um, but if you increase the input voltage, then, well, the multiplication circuit is pretty much the same, so if you give it more on the input, the output will rise. And, well, that does make sense. Problem being is, with all of these zappers, in, I would actually sort of recommend against uh, increasing the power input too much. And not only does this, this could have a chance of destroying your device, but the actual distance between the two electrodes here, or at least the, the technically three here, there's the two sides of the metal grid and then the finer grid is the live side. Uh, if <laughs> I was actually finding the fact that things were exploding on me, um, well, not exploding, I was getting self-discharges from, from the zapper itself because the voltage was going so high it could self-arc rather than requiring a bug to do it. So there's that, um, which is certainly an option you could do. Get if you can, um, How about you look around on eBay for, uh, what were they called again? Uh, 14500 batteries. They are lithium cells the size of a double A. And I would probably look around for the lithium ion phosphate uh, batteries. Reason being is they are they are technically lithium, so they'll have good current output capabilities. Because um, let's just say I did try and put a like a I think this is what's left of the old one. There I had like a foam battery hooked up. Uh, the current protection circuit was tripping constantly, so these things obviously require a bit of power at least to charge up. But the lithium ion phosphate batteries don't have as quite as high of a voltage as lithium ions do so it might be it might be a battery type worth looking at check ebay like i said um, for those particular batteries um and the reason for me maybe trying to do a lithium cell there uh, was for rechargeability it seems like quite a nice idea um just to recharge things rather than keep getting double a's and this actually does have a battery included uh already say lithium cell it turns out because it was like oh you can recharge this thing on the fly and there's even a goddamn torch on this thing like i can find the damn buttons for it um there you go. You got a light source on your damn bat if you ever need that for whatever reason. Um, <laughs> but this thing does have a lithium cell, uh, and it is 500 uh, milliamp hours, so eh, it's all right. And it looks like from the, I mean, I'm no circuit expert, um, but the actual circuitry inside this thing is a little bit more interesting than the standard cheapy bats. They seem, they seem, there seems to be more going on there. Partly, I suppose, there's technically a torch that says a bunch of like resistors there. There's some current limiting resistors for that lithium cell to obviously not blow it up. The actual lithium cell itself does seem to have its the protection circuit for charging um, and various other gubbins in there. And uh, for the most part, it's pretty much the same-ish, at least for the voltage multiplication side. Um, and another thing to check uh, with if you want to modify these things, a very simple modification you can do to your bat if you want to give it some more power, uh, is to check near the output capacitor, which is usually the biggest cap near the um, 
near the actual bat end. Uh, check for resistors going across the terminals as they are technically discharge resistors. Now that's technically a safety feature, um, but it does out it does limit the actual um, output slightly, and it is only slight. Um, but if you remove those resistors, it does help. Although I have to say, it does, if you're not careful, I was getting a little bit of self-discharge uh, with this thing. Because obviously without that little bit of resistance from that resistor, uh, the, the cap can actually completely fully charge most likely. And while well, the voltage was a bit higher, such that I was getting a bit of arcing. Nothing, nothing too bad though. Um, so there's that, um, and the most common upgrade that I would recommend you do if you're going to do anything like this is just to simply add more capacitors. Now, you can't really see much. I know you can see one cap there, um, but I was experimenting with a few different things. Uh, initially, and you're going to have to excuse the mess in the bin a second here, um, that's not the right drawer. Um, give me a second, there it is. Now, I did end up getting, to see what it would do, a bunch of these little guys. These are 3 kilovolt um, 10 nanofarads ceramic caps and I was gonna try and put a few more of those um, on the output side um, by that I mean uh, most of the circuit, bo circuit boards have extra um, like solder spots uh, and I was thinking well let's just put a few more on you know across the output there to increase the capacitance because to be fair as I've experimented with these you don't want to increase the voltage too much like I said otherwise you're going to get lots of self arcing and the caps will never stay charged for long enough for you to really keep you know whacking the damn bug with it um, and really what I would say to do is just put uh, capacitors on the output in parallel as to give it more charge to then discharge into said bug if you want to get at least you know especially with bigger insects you might need to, you know most bats you know you might need to give them a few whacks before they drop that you know always fall out the sky um, depending on the bat of course um, but with this it just makes it so that each discharge has more power behind it. Now, the amount of space I had, because the output cap's about here, right? Um, there's not a lot of space. I had enough space just under here um, to put about four of those ceramic caps in parallel. So 40 extra nanofarads. And it didn't seem to do a too terrible uh, amount. Um, this big cap you can see there, this is the two kilovolt thing that every single um, electric fly swat seems to have. Every in one of these um, swats has the exact same cap in it um, but the thing is it doesn't apart from its, its voltage rating it doesn't tell her it doesn't say at least not to my knowledge uh, not that I can even I find any data sheets on the damn cap um, what's its capacitance so you know those 10 nanofarads might have just been really really small compared to this guy which might be the true judging by the size difference um, so <laughs> You know, I was just wondering what, you know, at this point with those smaller caps in place, um, and I managed to fit, like I said, four of them in there, just kind of jam them in there, and they don't, they don't arc to anything inside there, they work pretty well, um, but it wasn't seem to be, it wasn't doing any anything significant, and I was like, at this point, well, this thing is just better than my old one, so, you know, grabbed, grabbed the soldering iron and, and just yoinked out that cap there, soldered on some wires, and directly soldered these to the output wires, uh, once again, of the circuit, um, obviously, this is all in parallel, and it just now I have basically two of the standard output capacitors on the end of this. So whatever these caps are rated at, I have two of those plus an extra forty nanofarads um, inside there, the little ceramic caps. So this thing has a lot more capacitance behind it, and people might be wondering, does this thing take longer to charge up before it zaps? Uh, not that I noticed, but it does mean that um, if you are holding the charge button down constantly, you're swinging around in the air looking for a, a bug, uh, or trying to hit the bug, when this thing connects, it's got a good spark to it. Now, I have a, since I only have one hand holding the phone and one hand holding this, I've just blue tacked a screwdriver there to um, show you what this thing's like. And this thing actually has a couple ways. You have, to, you, have to, you have to turn it on with this switch here, and then you hold the button down. Now, there's probably about a 5% chance that this thing seems to self-discharge on its own, but... Uh, if we um, get the screwdriver close, uh, or at least try and, try and poke it in, yeah. Now that is that is loud as balls. <laughs> like I'm, I might get the neighbours after me in a minute, but that is really, really loud. And yeah, I would not want to put my fingers in there. That's for sure. So. <laughs> Yeah, I would definitely say put another one of, put another one of those caps there in parallel if you happen to be getting another one of these, um, such that you can um, double the power output, at least not voltage in terms of capacitance, therefore more current, I think, or more energy uh, discharge, I should say. But yeah, very good. Now, not since, since I was only recording at thirty fps, you probably didn't see that. Now you have to um, 
properly discharge it by jamming a screwdriver in there, though that's the only thing, because we don't have any discharge, discharge resistors. So yes, I think I've, I've been rambling on for this um, this crazy bat for long enough. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think of this random bat down below in the comments. Let me know if you had any kind of mods that you've done to your bats with any good success. Um, anyway, yes, link to my Discord is in the description as always. And you'll know the drill by now. So, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video.